okay so today's class this is the first class and we try to discuss something about introductory complex analysis so as students are known that complex analysis or complex number is not very easy subject so we try to analyze this complex number or we try to establish the complex analysis in a very simple form let's start so let's uh, uh, we'll not start from any college or any higher dimensional thing let's go to school back and let's start from there suppose you remember in school in 6 or 7 standard if we have to draw any curve what we are doing basically suppose one equation is given to us y equals to x square and we have to draw the curve so what we are doing first we formulate some x and y points Suppose x equals to 0, so y should be 0 square 0, x equals to 1, y should be 1 square that is 1, x equals to 2, it should be 2 square that is 4 and so on. Similarly, we can take minus 1, so it should be minus 1 square that is 1, minus 2, it should be minus 2 square that is 4. So we are finding 5 to 6 points, then we start drawing the graph. So what is the procedure for drawing? First we have done x and y axis. So this is very important. So from class 6 or 7, knowingly or unknowingly, we are drawing this x and y axis. So back of the mind, we thought that something is going on about x and y axis because there are two variables x and y. Next we put this point. So the first point is x equals to 0, y equals to 0. So 0, 0. The next point is x equals to 1, y equals to 1. So it should be 1, 1. Next will be x equals to 2, y equals to 4. So it should be 2, 4. Similarly here it should be minus 1, 1 it should be minus 2, 4. Then we draw the curve. And this is the graph of y equals to x square. So I think we know this from our school level. Now I am going to tell you something which is very peculiar that from class 6 or 7 whatever you have done knowingly or unknowingly you are reaching to complex analysis so this is one basic of complex number what does that mean <coughs> normally you know a complex number is usually denoted by z which is equals to x plus i y okay so this x is called real part and this y is called imaginary part. For example, if we have taken z equals to 2 plus 3i, here the real part will be 2 and imaginary part will be 3. So many people are doing some mistake. They have written imaginary part as 3i. No, you should not take i. You should take only 3 instead of 3i. Okay. Now what I am going to tell that again like the two dimension, I want to take one graph and look into this number. What is this number? 2 plus 3i. This number this number I want to plot in this xy plane again. So this 2 plus 3i, this will be going to here 2 comma 3. So understand? So what is the meaning of this? The meaning of this is very clear. Any complex number x plus iy is equivalent to a two dimensional point x comma y so whatever two dimension we know that is one one complex number basically so 2 plus 3i is nothing but 2 comma 3 
I think this is much clear now. So this is the first thing. Next, suppose again you go back to school. Suppose this is a zero point. So the coordinate is 0 comma 0 which is called origin and we are trying to find the distance between these two points. So this is O point, this is a P point. So what will be the distance according to our trigonometry? So OP will be root over 2 minus 0 square plus 3 minus 0 square. So root over 2 square plus 3 square that we know. The same thing we apply for complex analysis. So what will happen in complex analysis? If we have taken a point, say Z equals to X plus IY. So this is basically the point X comma Y because we know any point X plus IY that is real plus i times imaginary part we can write as a complex now as a two dimensional point as real part comma imaginary part so x comma y and this is again origin 0 comma 0 this is again a complex number by the way this is actually 0 plus 0 into i now if i take the distance again what will be the distance the distance will be root over x minus 0 square plus y minus 0 square and this is denoted by r. So r is basically root over x square plus y square. So this distance is r. Okay. So now this portion is called modulus of this complex number modulus of this complex number. So let me write it in a fresh manner. So the next thing we are going to take is modulus. So modulus. What is the meaning of modulus? If z equals to x plus i y is a complex number then its modulus will be r or it can be denoted by mod of z equals to root over x square plus y square. It basically mean it is the distance of the point z from origin. So if I just draw this one, this will be, so if we have taken z x comma y, so this distance is called modulus. So one important thing I want to say here is that modulus is a distance and we know distance will never be negative. So modulus is always a non-negative quantity. Modulus will not be negative anytime because many times when you are doing the calculation, when you are doing root over x square plus y square, so you may think that it should be plus minus. No, it should be always plus. It should be always plus. Next, now the next thing is very important and geometrically very much significant. What is the next thing? So let me take this x axis and y axis. By the way, in complex number x is called real axis and y is called imaginary axis. But you can always write that as x and y axis also. It means the almost same thing. So now we are taking a point say P that is x comma y. So which means we have taken a point x plus i y. 
okay and origin we already know this is 0 comma 0 that is 0 plus 0 i now as per the previous definition so this is a bit so let me just make it straight as per the previous definition we know this distance is the modulus of p so let it is say r now again you go back to class 7 8 or 9 geometry so this is a point this is x comma y what does that mean if you start from o this distance is x you stop there you go upward this distance is y we know that now have you noticed something there is some angle of this op with positive x axis the angle we denote it by theta okay so now we have got a complete picture say this point i can give some name a so we we have got a complete picture we have got a triangle oap where the distance OA is x, the distance AP is y because it is the point P x comma y and this one is R. Now from geometry what do you know from Pythagorean theorem we know this is a right angle triangle. So OAP is a right angled triangle. So if it is right angle triangle, so what I know r square should be x square plus y square or r should be root over x square plus y square which is the modulus which we have discussed. So modulus you can find in ge as per geometry also. Next what extra thing we have got? We have got one angle theta. So what is theta? Till now we have not done anything about theta. Now we try to discuss what is theta. So what is theta? You see, if I take tan theta, what will be tan theta? Tan theta will be this perpendicular distance divided by the base. So theta should be tan inverse y by x. So now friends, we can understand that if any complex number is given to us always we can find its modulus that is the distance and its theta which is tan inverse y by x so this already you know this r is called modulus this theta is called argument of z so now we can understand that we have learned two things Number one, what is the modulus of a complex number? Number two, what is argument of a complex number? So, modulus and argument. So, basically it is R and theta. What is R? R is the distance and theta is the angle. So, now from this one, we try to give you some more view that let's see what will happen so let's for the time being i erase this much the diagram will be there now again this is a right angle triangle so this is o a p is right angle triangle we know this again we want to apply some school level trigonometry what is that what is sin theta what is cos theta if i do this base divided by this hypotenuse it will give you me cos theta so cos theta will be x by r so x will be r cos theta so basically we have got one relation between x and r now similarly from y and r what I got sin theta will be y by r so y should be r sin theta okay so what we have got you see this triangle is a very simple triangle but it is very important 
because we have got many things we have got modulus we have got argument we have got the value of x in terms of r and theta we have got the value of y in terms of r and theta now the complex number given to me is z equals to x plus i y okay now what is x r cos theta plus what is y i times what is y r sin theta so this we can write r times cos theta plus i sin theta so r times this portion can be written e power i theta and this is called polar form of z so today's class till now what we have learned we have learned what is the meaning of a complex number then we have given you the geometry of complex number then we have given you that how you can find the modulus and argument of a complex number which is basically school level geometry though when we encounter some problem it may not be so much easy then we have given you that okay from the same triangle how we can convert the x and y as r and theta function that is x equals to r cos theta y equals to r sin theta now if i get the value of x and y we know z equals to x plus i y so we just put this value and we have got r e power i theta which is called the polar form of z so thank you for watching and please subscribe and like our channel any question if you have please feel free to ask me in the comment section and also criticize the lecture whether in positive way or negative way but please criticize and please subscribe the channel thank you